Hey guys, what's up? Uh, so I actually watched a film yesterday, really good film called The Courier, originally named Iron Bark, I believe when it was released in the Sundance Film Festival in 2020, I think. It stars Benedict Cumberbatch, which I'm pretty sure every one of you guys know. It was very similar to A Bridge of Spies. Um, there's several films like this, uh, more of like the grounded in reality, showing the darker side, the more realistic side, um, and it usually has to do with trading. There's Red Sparrow, um, Bridge of Spies, Allied, things, things, things like that, a little bit more grounded. Of the, those films that I've seen, and I've enjoyed most of them, even though they tend to be a little bit slower paced, I would say maybe Bridge of Spies is the best of those type of films, but this is probably my favorite of that genre, of that subgenre. And I'll tell you why. I, I did say that it was slightly so, slower paced. I can say that it was very repetitive in nature, and normally that's a negative. However, in this instance, I actually really enjoyed the fact, and, and I'll, I'll explain why. The thing is, in like something like A Bridge of Spies or Red Sparrow, a lot happens, a lot of different things happen, a lot of different events that you're supposed to process, a lot of names come up, a lot of interesting things go up. It's very plot driven. This was actually a very relatively simplistic film. They didn't add a lot of nuance to it and it, it allowed for something to really shine. And that is, what is it like to be a spy? Like what is it genuinely like? It's not fun and games, not the sexy thing that you think it is. Like, what is it like? What is the emotional burden of being a spy to try to protect your nation? It was so flawlessly done because of how grounded they made it. A salesman who was asked to do something good for his nation and for the good of his world, and they already had somebody on the other side that was willing to do the same. And that was amazing. So for me, the reason the film was so effective is because it, it tied into the emotional burden of being that person. And that is something that I don't see very often. A lot of like Bridge of Spies did it, but it was still a plot driven film. And, and, and while the performances were really good and I enjoyed watching it, it, it this one just, I. I was so invested emotionally in what was happening. When I say that there's a lot of, it was repeating itself, yeah, because he was just couriering from back and forth information. It, there were so many scenes of Oleg, who is the, the Russian on the Russian side, just taking photos, giving it to him, going back. And they just kept doing it over and over and over again. And the reason they did that is because every single time they increased the level of anxiety that you ha held as an audience member, one notch, another notch. And that's like the point of the film. Not everybody likes films where you get stressed out. So this probably wouldn't be for you then um, because it was a very stressful film, but it did it in such an effective manner. I think the only thing that I felt was a little bit on the weaker side was, uh, and I know it was already dragging out. I think they could have cut some of the middle. They didn't have to repeat it as many times as they maybe did. And they could have done a little bit more in the beginning, just a little bit more. I don't like movies that are so heavy in the beginning, but they basically just asked him to be a, a spy and he just said yes. And maybe that is actually the true story. It just didn't seemed 100% believable. It was like one lunch and, and then that was it. So I, I think they could have maybe had to convince him a bit more. And they did some convincing throughout. Something I really enjoyed about the film also is there were very few like main characters. Greville is the main character, yes, but there's like four, I would say. There's Greville, there's Oleg, the Russian, um, and then there's, I'll call him the CIA agent and the MI6 agent, the older man and the blonde woman. Um, and so there wasn't really a, a lot. So I, you could really invest in the relationship building when there's so much going on in a lot of these espionage films, you don't, you, you can't ground yourself in the relationship building. And that was not the case here. And the relationship building was very important. Um, even though it was a true story, they still focus on the relationship building as opposed to just like the things that happen. A lot of times in true stories, they just like unravel the things that happen. They make them crazy and they dramatize them a bit. And then 
you have a film. This one was like, no, what if we just like actually figured out what the emotional bond would be? It was relatively funny. There was moments that was funny and witty and, and cute. So that was great. It wasn't heavy in it and they knew when to do it, but it was, it was good, especially when he was like, like, uh, not seducing, but like, yeah, well, let's call it seducing. Seducing the, the other Russian guys, um, to be like a part of his like business venture. Um, like they, there was cute, fun moments. Greville's relationship with the different agents was really important. How he was kind of getting manipulated by the CIA agent and how the MI6 agent was trying to be more realistic about it. But then even the MI6 agent um, agreed with the CIA agent in the end and, and how that dynamic is because we're talking about the, the safety of the world and he would have done the same thing. And, and that, that's just so interesting. Like the way the plot unfolds is so interesting. But then you have Greville's relationship with, so we have Greville's relationship with the agents, you have Greville's relationship with Oleg, which that could be like an hour long video. It's just so nuancedly beautiful. Um, there's his relationship with his family, specifically his wife, Sheila, but even his, his son. That was really, that was, I, in my opinion, the strongest part of the film. I had no idea how it was gonna end. I didn't know much about this specific instance in the Cuban Missile Crisis and during this conflict. I, I didn't know about this specific story, which is probably why they're telling it. But I didn't know. Were they gonna, was he gonna get caught? Was Greville gonna get caught? Were they gonna get Oleg and his family out? Were, are they, was what they're doing actually even effective? Did they save anything? Was it all just BS? I had no idea and you really couldn't because unless you knew the story because they didn't they didn't showcase anything they they kept it stressful it, you couldn't tell and you couldn't tell tonally were they trying to emulate a happy inspiring story or like a sad realistic story that was kind of inspiring or just like a depressing one you didn't really know where it was going to go everybody's performance was really solid i'm not sure i love the cia agent's performance that much she was she was a, not that she, not that she was annoying to me because that can be a character some of her things felt a little like she was trying to be in the character a little too much um and it it, it is a hard balance but i i found that i felt i felt i could see the actor just a bit um playing the character as opposed to just a character it's okay it was, she still did a good job. It's just, that's what I noticed. You could tell me if you guys agree with me on her performance um, as a as an actress. Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> can do no wrong. Yeah, he's just, he did a great job. I felt the salesman in him. I felt it. Uh, I think the only thing is like, <laughs> um, as he started to become, get more involved, I wish he would have held on a little bit to his salesman qualities because He's been a salesman his whole life and he started to get a little bit intense where I get it. It's a stressful situation and you would get stressed, but I, I was starting to lose some of his like salesmanness. He's just a salesman. You go into espionage training. He, he's just an untrained salesman. Um, so there was that. I loved his character's arc of like, yeah, I love that he threw up on the plane. I love that he started getting mean to his family. People don't understand what stress does to a human being. I love it when they show the realism of the human psyche. I've talked about it a couple of times on this channel. Human mind is very fragile. You go into that kind of stress, you're gonna get ulcers, you're gonna throw up, you're gonna get headaches, you're gonna get dehydrated from sweating too much. And they did all of it and it was so good. So they had that, the rest of the ensemble was really good. The star. Just like in Bridge of Spies, the star wasn't Tom Hanks of the, the performers, it was the, the Russian spy. Oleg, man. Oh, I sorry, I got goosebumps. Wow, wow, what a, what a, and not even like the performance was, was the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. It was a really, really strong performance. But just the character is just, you, Ooh, you just, you're so there for him, even more so. And you wouldn't expect that. Um, you think like, okay, you understand that. I didn't even think there was gonna be an Oleg. I thought it was just gonna be about Benedict ben Cumberbatch character. And this, this other character totally stole the show. Just like the way he spoke, like you were so rooting for him. 
and his family, the way he spoke about coming to America, but the way that you knew he was a patriot and the way he was doing this for the sake of his family and the sake of his world. Um, th the way that he would talk about, like the scene with the dinner and he's talking about, you know, my politicians say your politicians, but you know, it, it, you know, it starts with two people and that's what you and I are doing. Just like the way he talked about things was so passionate, but so grounded. He wasn't like over the top emotionally, just like you could feel it. I love it when you can show a lot of emotion without actually trying to showcase emotion. You can just, you can realistically feel it. It was so, it was so authentic. It was so genuine. So I was just so in, in, enamored by his character and his relationship with uh, Greville, which I really wasn't expecting. And that was something that was interesting. I love it when movies kind of go in directions that you aren't expecting. I was expecting it to be about the stress of, of being this person, which they did. I wasn't expecting it to be about like, almost like brotherhood or friendship, about a deep-rooted friendship with people that are not from the same culture, that are not from the same land, that don't even 100% speak the same language, even though I guess they do. The, the, there's so many barriers and it's just, a, f a friendship that's rooted and embodied in decency as a human being. And that's just a, such a powerful thing that we don't get to see enough. And the fact that it was a true story would just made it all the more. And I know they maybe changed some things and it's always based on a true story, but that's, a, that's amazing. So let's, talk, let's start talking about the ending. So the ending, yeah, I, wasn't expecting him to get caught. I love that they didn't prolong the capture thing. That is always such a big thing. Like you're, you're thinking he's gonna escape, you're thinking he's gonna escape, you're thinking he's gonna escape. Oh, they, they catch him or they don't catch him by, the, by one second, you know? No, this wasn't that film at all. They almost like, they got away, there was some tension. You weren't sure if they were gonna catch him on the plane. You weren't sure if they were gonna catch Oleg, but it just all unraveled very seamlessly in almost real time. You were still stressed, but they didn't prolong it. It felt real. He goes home. It's time to get his family. It's too late. And like that scene, I'm going to try not to get emotional because that's just the, everything about the ending. But that scene is so powerful because he's trying to save face, but he already knows it's too late. I'm sorry, if you've ever seen Breaking Bad, there is a scene that you know that I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not gonna spoil it, but if you remember a scene, if you remember the TV episode, Osmandius, I believe is how you pronounce it, like considered one of the greatest scenes, in t greatest episodes in television history. I'm talking about Hank. I'm talking about Walter in that ending thing. That's what this, that's what this felt like, where it's just, he knows it's he knows it's over and it's just this heartbreaking thing because he knows he's trying to he 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 doesn't know how to explain it to his family so he can't look at them but he can't not look at them because he knows this is the last time he's gonna ever see them and like i'm sorry if that doesn't that doesn't like break you down as a human being i don't know what does and i think that emotional quality was is missing in a lot of these films they try to make it just really dark and things like that but like they're human beings and it's actually just you know, like that gut-wrenching feeling like in your heart that's just like, it's it was there. And that was, yeah, I, that's when I started to realize where the film was gonna go. Um, so that scene was, I thought he was gonna get executed there. So also, they just kept me on my toes, which is really interesting. One of the really strong things about Greville's side of this is how fast it goes dark. I loved that. They always kind of transition you like, oh, the, no. Even before he got into cell, strip, cool, head shave, cool. You're basically shitting in a bucket. Okay, cool. You are being tortured in, in, in not like painful ways, just psychologically tormenting ways. Your bed is getting worse every single time. Your bucket is never getting, you know, uh, recycled you your food is just awful always you are having to walk in circles you are freezing I love the freezing aspect of that never no one ever talks about the like just temperature side of stuff the sound of the lights the way they try to show them food and it just gets it gets so it's so fast 
And then you're just assuming he's gonna get out. He's gonna get out. And then it hits you with like a six months later and that's just like, and that just like hits you like a ton of bricks. Um, and I know I'm not talking about his relationship with his wife and I kind of wanted to leave it for this section. Um, that was such a good under uh, subplot. I was gonna say undertone, but subplot. Such a good subplot because he had like an infidelity and so great. Yeah, if you're his wife, especially, I love that they added a little infidelity or it was real. You wouldn't trust him. He's being shady. She knows him. She knows when he's lying because he's a salesman. So she knows all this thing and it's causing more stress throughout the film for him. And then her realization um, that he is actually doing something beautiful for his country is just like, yeah, when are you, how are you going to think that? He's just a salesman. You know, that's not what you would ever go to. And to know that you were adding to his stress and the devastation you must feel as a wife and as a partner. And it's just, that part is awful. And then, you know, and I'm not, he, yeah, he physically lost weight. I'm sorry, it's, it doesn't make you a better actor for it, but like kudos to him for, for going there. I, I, I do appreciate it. Like Dallas Buyers Club, Machinist, a lot of these actors have done these, these things. And, and, I, and I know how hard it is. I'm not trying to underserve it. But I am saying that like that doesn't that doesn't matter for the film. It just it, thank you for doing that, Benedict Cumberbatch, for the reason that it, it really sold it home. That was that was really good. Um, before I get into the very sharp climax, which you guys know what it is, um, I did want to say, and I wanted to to say how how effective the cinematography was. The production value of a lot of these shots was a lot better than maybe people think it. There was like the golf seat shot, the way that it, even how the, the movie opens with the, the, the way it's shot. There's a lot of scenes like that where you just like can't tell. The way that the MI6 agent's walking and you can actually, you can't see who's protesting what, but you can tell what's going. There's a lot of that beautiful cinematography in the film that I would recommend if you, if you don't remember, just like watch it again because... A lot of times in these grounded films, you can't tell, but it was like actually very beautifully shot. There's a scene with him when Sheila comes and visits, and uh, that's a that's a powerful scene. This is like Benedict Benedict's moment, um, where he gets to talk to his wife. That scene is so great because he, as an actor, adds like 16 layers of emotion to it, um, and that's like something, especially in those scenes. As as an actor, the way that we usually do those moments is we tend to layer in what are the different things we're feeling in those moments what are the different circumstances at stake and so there's things like yeah emotionally and physically he's exhausted he doesn't want to show his wife that because he doesn't want her to give up on him um he doesn't want to make his wife feel as awful as maybe she does he doesn't want to um he doesn't want to show weakness with the guard around um, but he's starting to break e emotionally. He wants to show her that he loves her. He's also very overwhelmed with the fact that this is the first time he's seen her. You think all of those and you add them and I could see almost every single layer he put onto it. From the, the, the way he smiled, the way his eyes moved, it, th those things, that's like a scene to watch just so how, how many layers you can have as an actor and, and why those scenes are so powerful is because of those layers. Now, the climax of the film is him and Oleg. When they bring Oleg out, which I don't know about you, but that caught me off guard. I was like 100% certain they already executed him. There's just a scene where you don't know where it's gonna go. Um, you really believe in Oleg that like he didn't sell him out, but he just keeps saying he's sorry. And you can see it on Greville's face that he's like, did I get betrayed? And he's almost trying to already start to forgive him for betraying him. And then when he found out he didn't betray him, and then he just says, I forgive you for a different reason. I forgive you so that he can lead up to the line where he tells him, shit, that, that, sorry, that scene is really, really, God, that scene is like everything to me. By far my favorite scene in any, of these type of subgenres, and this is the first time I've gotten emotional on camera. Um, I'll keep it in. Uh, 
when he's, he uses that as a transition so he can tell him that he did it. And then you just realize that Oleg this whole time had no idea that he saved the world, that he deterred nuclear war, and that his parent is sorry, his family would be so freaking proud of him. And like he didn't know that. And I I I always thought he got executed, so in my mind he wasn't gonna f find that out. But just knowing that he didn't know that this whole time, and he just learns it in that moment. And he's telling him, like, you did it. And he's trying to make it sound like he's angry about it so they don't get as mad. Like, you did it. But he's really saying, you did it. You, you, you saved it. You should, when they execute you and put you in an unmarked grave and you don't get to live out the rest of your life with your family, know that you sacrificed your life to do something very powerful for the world. And that's the look on Oleg's face where he thinks you could tell he thought it was for nothing because he even says it, but you, you realize it and he just can't even process it. And they don't have time because this was a realistic film. They take him away. I love that. There's no beautiful, passionate moment. No, the guard takes him away the moment he says it. I love that. That's exactly what would happen. So he doesn't even get to see it. So you just, as an actor, have to almost rush your feelings as you would in that situation where he just like doesn't understand what's happening almost. He's almost like, I don't, I don't understand. I did it. We did it. We did it. And it's just like that, that was the, it could have been the most boring film leading up to it with just foundation. And that would have been the payout it needed. That would have been the punchline that would have made it all worthwhile. And the rest of the film was amazing anyways. <sighs> I didn't think reliving it was going to be that, that hard. I didn't think I was going to be as invested in it as I was. And that's more than anything you could ask for in a film. So, all right, guys. <laughs> uh, let me know what you guys think. If you thought the film was good, if you thought it was a little too slow, art is subjective. So if you guys have a different perspective, please let me know in the comment section. And on that note, I'll catch you guys in the next one.